So good morning. Namaste everyone. Welcome. Um just want to shout out to Janina. She's in Sweden. Hello. And this morning Rich is joining us. So great stuff. Good to have you here. Um with all the old is yogis. <laughs> um so guys, this morning we're going to be doing a really nice uplifting flow yoga practice. Um, we're going to be throwing in some back bends, and if you want to, I'm going to give you a deep back bend to do towards the end, but you don't have to do that. And of course, I love to do um, twists and back bends together. So we're doing twisting, back bending, and a really great flow for you. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to start on shins, toes together, knees wide. And walk your arms forward, sink your forehead down to the mat. Giving it a nice long stretch through your arms, sinking down into your forehead. You start to become aware of your breathing. Each time you breathe in, lengthen through the elbows. Each time you breathe out, sinking into your forehead, softening into the armpits, softening across your upper back and into your back ribs with that breath. And then let's take it into a twist, threading your right arm under your chest, turn your ear to the ground. Sink that right shoulder down to the floor and keep stretching long through the left side body and into your left elbow and arm. Each time you breathe out, feel the pelvis sink. And then we're reaching the right arm forward. And I'll change and thread the left arm under to the twist on your other side. Turn your face. So you look in the direction of the left fingers. And then settle down into your hips and your lower back again. Softening into your chest, even though it's a little bit compressed here. Allowing your face to relax. And now we're going to take left arm forwards again and come back to your ears and stretch through both your arms. And looking up to your thumbs, we're going to slide up into a sphinx pose, coming onto your tummy, stretch your legs back behind you. And lifting your chest into this gentle back bend. So make an adjustment here for your tension in your back this morning. If you want those elbows further forward or if you want them all the way under the shoulders to get the chest fully lifting. And you're welcome to look forwards or drop your chin to your throat. As you stay here, again feeling the breath. Noticing how your spine is moving. How your rib cage is moving. Even the belly moves here, even though it's squishing into the floor. You keep softening your shoulders back away from your chest. And now from here, we're going to lower all the way down. Slide your hands back and make your way up onto hands and knees for cats and cows. Spread those fingers. Take the arms straight under the shoulders. And then moving with the breath. Deep lengthening into the front body as you cow stretch. And squeezing that belly up nice and tight as you cat stretch. And keep rolling. Full deep breath. Sink the shins, get heavy in your feet.
And now next time you round up into your cat stretch, let's hold it there, tucking your chin into your throat. And either just staying there in that cat stretch or gently pulsing the hips backwards and forwards. Not a big pulse backwards and forwards. Try to keep your spine rounding. Squeeze your chin into your throat, looking back towards your chest, just to get that extra length in the sacrum and the lumbar spine and the lower back. And then we're coming back to a flat spine. Keep your hips over your knees. Walk your arms forwards, baby down dog. Puppy pose. And melting into your front body with your breath. As your chest goes down with each exhale, armpits and upper arms lift. Inner elbows lift up so those arms are nice and active. And we're walking back up onto palms and we're to take it into full downwards facing dog. Packing those toes, lift your knees, give it a stretch out here or a walk. Make sure that you have spaces between the fingers so the wrists are supported. From here, we're going to take feet all the way forwards. Uttanasana, standing forward bend. You can hold on to forearms or hang the arms down. You can sway. You can roll your head. Just wake yourself up, or well, you're already awake, but wake your body up. Okay, now we're going to hook thumbs into each other. And on an inhale, you're going to come all the way up, arms over your head. As you breathe out, bend your elbows, pull them apart. On the in-breath, stretch your arms back up again. As you breathe out, forward bend. And you're going to hook the other thumb in front. On an in-breath, lifting all the way back up. As you breathe out, elbows bend. On the in-breath, stretch up. And on your exhale, forward fold. We're staying in the forward bend, release. And from here, take yourself back into downwards dog again. We move into our Surya Namaskar. On an in-breath, coming forwards into plank. Lower down as you exhale. Keep the shoulders lifted as the chest goes down. Curling into your back bend. And then making your way back to downwards facing dog. We're holding down dog. So again, check those palms. Check those fingers are aligned. Let the head hang. Relax your neck. Focus on the breath flowing through you right now. And we're going to look forward, step, walk, or hop your feet to your hands. When you get to your standing foot, then sink yourself all the way down. On your next in-breath, rise, arms to the sky. As you breathe out, sliding hands to heart, leaning to your spine. Straight back up with your next in-breath. On the exhale, bow down as you fold, tip into your shins and the front of the feet. After you lengthen, this time we're going straight back into plank, step, walk, or hop it, and then lower down in your own time. Inhale, curl your chest up, cobra or upwards facing dog, and then making your way back to hold your down dog again. Just relax the neck, keep lengthening. And now staying in your down dog, 
you know, lift your heels, lift your hips up as high as you can, lift your heels up as high as you can, and with your feet there, try and, or, or like that, hips like that, try and take your chest closer to your thighs. So it's a tippy toe down dog, and you're just taking your chest and your armpits closer to your thighs. And now bending into the knees, step off or hop your feet forwards to the top of the mat and sink all the way down. Now we're going to hook into the thumbs again. On an inhale, you're coming all the way up, holding the bend as you exhale. So elbows bend and then keep breathing. And pull the elbows all the way back so that pulling the elbows back takes the shoulder blades in towards your spine and you can use those shoulder blades to push the chest forward. On an in-breath, stretch up. On your exhale, fall straight down. Once you're in the forward bend, change the hook of the thumbs. And then on an inhale, coming all the way up again. With an exhale, elbows bend. Keep leaning towards your back. So the more you pull your elbows back, the more you'll want to push your bum forwards. Don't do that. Keep the hips moving back. Keep the elbows going back. Next in breath, reach your arms up and on an exhale, forward fold. On an inhale, lengthen the spine, half lift. We're going back into your plank and down. All the way through your back bend in your own time. Good, guys. Back to hold your downwards facing dog. Each time you breathe out, hug your belly button in tighter towards your spine. So really firm in the pelvic floor. And now we're going to take feet forwards to hands again. Feet a little bit apart. We're staying here. Swing your arms back behind you. Clasp or interlace your fingers. Get a little bit deeper into front of shoulders, chest. Sternum, collarbones, all opening up now. Hanging your head down. Right, now when we come up, we bring hands together at your chest and step your feet into touch. We're going to take a twisting chair. Bend the knees, wrap your right elbow over your left thigh or knee, and then lift that left elbow straight up. Sit your bum down super low. Squeeze the knees and ankles in together, and keep shifting your weight into the backs of the thighs. So this is a balancing pose. As the head goes forward, you want to keep taking your bum back to counterbalance. On an inhale, come up to standing leg straight. On an exhale, take that twist to the other side. Left elbow down. Right elbow all the way up. Sit the hips down even lower if you can. Great, guys, coming up to center. And we're going to move into our vinyasa proper now. From here, inhale and reach your arms up over your head. On your exhale, forward fold. Tip into the front of the shins. Don't lean into your bum. After you lengthen, we're going straight back to downwards facing dog. And from down dog, you're going to take a low lunge. Right foot forward, left knee down. Arms um, straight up to warrior one. Once you're there, get that front shin directly underneath your right knee. You can look forward, you can look up. If you want to go a little bit more into that preparation for the back bend, lifting your head always turns what you're doing into a back bending pose. And now we're going to keep legs as they are and open up into warrior two arms, right arm forward, left arm back. You can drop the right forearm to the inside of that right knee and push it open. Get a little bit more release in the right in the groin. Turn your left palm up, 
and then looking back over those left fingertips. Stretch the elbows straight. Looking good, everyone. On an exhale, we're circling hands to the ground. In breath, steps your right leg into plank. On your out breath, lower down. Slow yourself all the way through and back to your down dog when you're ready. From down dog, low lunge. Left foot steps forward, right knee down. Arms reach up alongside your ears. Again, just make sure that front shin bone is directly under your knee. Always keeping those knees nice and safe and protected. And then we'll open up to warrior two. Left arm forward, right arm back. We're going to turn the right palm up. Left forearm can drop to the inside of the left knee. You can press it open. You can stretch that right elbow straight. Keep taking both your shoulders back to your spine. And notice your breath. On an out breath, we take hands to the floor. Breathe in your own time. In breath into plank and then take your transition. From down dog, taking feet forwards to your hands, straight into your forward bend. And now this time when we lift, we're going to take it to cactus arms. So take your arms forward. Spread the fingers wide as you lift. And then we're going to pulse with the breath. On an in-breath, pull the elbows down. As you breathe out, reach up. Doesn't matter how low you get the elbows or not. Out-breath to stretch. In-breath to pull down. So again, we're pulling down and then pressing the chest forward. And if you want to work a little bit deeper into the back bend, each time you breathe in, you can look up. Or you can keep looking up. Or you can keep looking forward. Do what feels good for you right now. And next time we pull down, we hold it there. Now, if you're going for the back bend or more of a back bend like I'm doing here, make sure you're not, again, jamming the hips forward. It's going to crunch into your lower back. Keep the bum moving back, even though the shoulders are going back as well. On an in-breath, stretch your arms up. On an out-breath, forward fold. Step your feet in to touch each other. You know, bend your knees down deep and once more into your twisting chair. Try and get that elbow all the way over the knee. The lower your hips go down, the more of a twist you'll get and the stronger you'll get in your leg. Now try and keep that bend in the knee, turn your chest forward and swivel straight over to the other side. So we try not to lift the bum as you transition, keep the hips down low. So we're really working those quads and hamstrings right now, making them super strong. Straight into standing forward bend. And we hold it here for a few breaths. So you can keep the feet together or you can take them apart if you prefer. Work the pose the way you want to right now. And just keep the top of the head pointing down. So guys, when I'm doing these Zoom classes, I've got earphones in, um, a microphone in the earphone. And if I drop the top of my head down, then they fall out. So when I'm doing forward bends, don't copy what I'm doing with my head. You let the top of your head hang down. Don't look at the floor. Okay, from here, back into downwards facing dog. We're going to take a twisting lunge, right foot forward. Left hand on the ground, right arm to the sky. Now bring that left hand in nice and close to your right foot. Don't lean it out to the side on the left. Bring your hand in close to your foot. Work the balance here. 
You can look up to your right thumb. And we're going to take a low lunge, left knee down, arms up to warrior one. From here, bending the elbows, pull them wide like you did at the top of the mat, and bring your hands behind your head or your neck. So you're pushing your palms into your head or your neck, pull the elbows back in the opposite direction. You're welcome to tilt and look up if that's comfortable for you in your neck. Don't let that neck strain, guys. Next pose we're moving into is a twisting triangle. So we're going to take hands to the ground. Back knee lifts up. Turn the back heel in and down. Left hand stays on the floor. Right arm to the sky. Now just like your twisting lunge, bring that left hand in close to the right foot. Or hand on your ankle or shin. And again, you can look up to your right thumb if you want to. We're going to be transitioning here from your twisting triangle into a half moon. So we're going to bring that right hand down, bend your right knee and reach your right fingers out in front of you. Left hand can be on the left hip as you step, left leg up, and then left arm to the sky if you're taking the full pose. We keep looking down at the ground for balance. Standing leg can bend if you need to. Keep taking shoulders back away from your chest. And then left hand down. Keep the left leg up. We're going to bend the left knee, balance on the left hand or fingers, and reach back with your right hand for your left foot. Now, to get that foot, you might have to bend the standing leg quite deep. You might have to drop the left knee down quite low. Once you get your foot, then you can try with the added challenge of trying to stretch the leg and trying to lift that left knee even higher. We're coming into a version of standing split. Squeeze your big toe down into the floor for extra balance. And then carefully we're going to let go and step back into lunging legs. Right leg back, down dog split. Good, everyone. Flowing forwards on an inhale and all the way down and through. Back to your down dog. From down dog, we're taking twisting lunge, left foot forwards. Right hand is on the ground, left arm to the sky. Take that left knee directly over the heel. You can look up at the left fingers. And once more, just check that right hand is not too far off to the right side of your mat. Bring your hand in close to the left foot. Now what that does is it challenges your balance. And when you're in this twisting lunge and you're challenging your balance, you, you have to squeeze the pelvic floor muscles tighter to hold yourself in balance. We're moving into the low lunge. Back knee down to the ground. Arms go up to warrior one. Nice, guys. And then we're going to bend those elbows, hands behind head or neck. Open the elbows way back. And keep lifting up out of your lower back. So arms as they are is going to make these back ribs sink towards the lower back. So we're going to keep trying to lift the back ribs up out of the lower spine. We're we going to be moving into a twisting triangle. So release hands to the ground. Back knee lifts up. Turn the back heel in and down and straighten both legs. Great. Right hand stays on the floor or hand on your ankle, your shin. Lift arm all the way up. If you want the full twist, you look up to that left thumb. Check that you're still breathing. Try and keep that breath soft. Now we're going to be moving into the half moon from here. So left hand comes down. 
Shift your weight onto your left foot and reach out with the left hand or fingers in front of your toes. Right leg starts to go up. And then the last thing is that right arm lifts all the way up. Check that you're flexing your right ankle. Standing leg can bend. And try and feel for an overall sensation of balance in your whole body right now. Is there somewhere that you're tipping out of or tipping more into? Shift out of it slightly and find the centeredness of the whole pose. We're going to keep that back leg lifting up. Bring the right hand or fingers down to the ground. If you need to, you bend the left knee even more. Reach back with the left hand for the right foot. And then if you can, if you want to try and take it deeper, standing leg starts to straighten or it can stay bent. You try and lift that right knee to point all the way up to the roof, which is quite a challenge to do here. Well done, everyone. Slowly stepping back into lunging legs. Left leg back. Down dog split. We're coming forwards to plank. And then down. Flat onto the ground. Nice, guys. We're going to come back into our sphinx arms. And just take a moment here. So like you did at the very beginning, you're welcome to drop your chin or keep looking forward. Um, I don't suggest tilting the head back. Don't look up. That's not so good for the back of the neck. Okay, now we're going to take our full half frog. So you're welcome to keep the back bend or you can do the easier version with head on your arms. But we're going to bend the left knee and reach back. With your left hand for your foot and then we squeeze the heel in so if you're bringing um if you're up in the back bend just check in with this left hip like as you squeeze your heel in and as the shoulder goes back we tend to tilt over onto the right hip so try and square your pelvis on the mat square into your chest as much as you can here and just make sure that this bent knee, the left knee is not pointing too far out to the side. You want to try and have your left knee straight back behind your left hip. It's relaxing into your breath to help your body release. And carefully let go. Balance onto your left forearm wherever you need to, or forward on the forearm if you prefer that easier way of doing this to take it to the other foot. Okay, so once that heel comes up and you're where you're going to hold your pose, sink a little bit more into the right hip and the right ribs and waist. Okay, good, guys. We release off. And just sink yourself completely flat into the floor. And take a few breaths here. Let your whole body relax. And you can let your heels flop out. And once again, notice that rolling movement of the spine as you breathe. The breath creates a wave in the spine with each inhale and each exhale. Now those of you who might be missing the sea, like I am, this is my little connection to the ocean. Whenever I focus on my breath and I feel that wave, like the ocean is inside me. <laughs> Now we're going to make our way up onto shin and we're going to take a camel pose. Right? So check those thighs are parallel, knees directly under your hips. Um, 
camel is an oddly precise pose with the placing of the knees. You can have those knees off alignment by a millimeter and it will, it will impact into your lower back quite strongly. So directly on the knees, you can tuck your toes or point them. You reach back and interlace your fingers and just open the chest or lift the arms to get a little bit more into that stretch in the front of the shoulders. That's preparation. And then we bend into the elbows and bring hands to the lower back and start to arch. And now the closer you get to your feet, the more your bum will want to go back. So if you're holding onto heels, then the hips have to push forwards again. Now each time you breathe in, lift your back ribs up away from your bum to try and lengthen that space. Not so easy to do right now, but we've got to keep trying. On an in-breath, we're coming up, and we're going to go straight into a down dog. One of the best poses to release the spine after back bending is down dog. From your down dog, we're taking a low lunge. You step your right foot forward, left knee down to the mat. Important here to get this right heel straight under the knee and then maybe taking your right foot a little bit wider. We're going to be going for this back foot. So pad the knee if you need to and then reaching for your heel. Or if you need to, hips go back, you get your foot, then the hips go forwards again. Now, if you can here, if this is super intense on your knee, you want to try and really lunge forwards to even come onto the very top of your left thigh. Like right now, my kneecap is actually not even touching the floor. I'm on the, on the thigh muscle more than I am on the knee um, cap. Okay, and then you can come up a little bit higher if you want to go deeper, uh, start to get the back bend part of it, but you don't have to do that. You can keep hand on the floor and you can also reach back with both hands for that left foot or you can take right arm to the sky. And then to keep your awareness in your forearm and your hand, if that arm is lifted, you bring index finger and thumb together. So many nice variations of this pose. When you come out, do it nice and slow. Be really careful. And we're going to go back into half split. So stretch that right leg straight. Left foot over the left knee. Hold yourself down. Or hands on shin if you need to. Balancing on fingers. Or reaching the arms out. Okay, so remember guys, the advanced pose of half split is not full split. Full splits is a completely different posture. If you're wanting to go into the deeper pose here, then we're trying to get the forehead to the floor. But don't round your back to take your head closer to the ground. Keep that spine nice and long. All right, fantastic, guys. Lunging forward. Get the front heel under the knee. And now we're going to twist hands to chest. Wrap your left elbow over the right thigh. So unlike your twisting chair, we've got four arms at a diagonal angle here. To complete the twist and make this more of a balanced pose, you look back over that right elbow. Be heavy with the, the foot that's on the ground. The more you push the back foot down into the floor, the better balance you'll have. Okay, now when we untwist, we're going to take arms up to warrior one. And you can either stay there or we're going to drop the left hand down and take a side stretch. So left fingers reach towards the floor. Right arm reaches all the way over your head towards the left. And now feel that breath. Wherever you might be feeling tight, guide your out breath into that place.
And we're coming up the center, hands to the mat, right leg back, down dog split. Okay, so again, let your head hang. And then either keeping the leg straight or bending your right knee. Check in with your shoulders. Don't lean into the left shoulder. Square the shoulders and the armpits out so you're not straining that left shoulder joint. Nice. We're taking right foot to the ground and then we're stepping left foot forwards into a low lunge. Right knee to the mat. Check your alignment here again. So we want that left heel directly under the knee, maybe taking the left foot a little bit wider towards the left, give you better balance. And then we're reaching back for that right foot with the right hand. Once more, you can take the bum back to get your foot and then soften forward. Left hand can stay on the ground. Or bringing your left hand or forearm to the left thigh or knee. Now the higher up you lift your chest here, the more your body will want to twist to the right. So keep trying to square your chest towards the front of your mat. Maybe holding onto your foot with both hands or left arm to the sky. If you're doing left arm to the sky, bring your index finger and your thumb together in your wisdom mudra. And feel the breath. Keep the breath light and soft. We're carefully coming out and shifting back into your half split. Okay, get the right angle in the right knee. Don't take your bum to hover back over that right calf. Puts a little bit too much stress on the knee joint. And then folding to whatever level you're going for here. Okay, maybe you're going to try and get your nose to the floor, or your forehead to the floor. But keep lengthening the front body. The lower down you go, the more difficult it becomes to flatten out in the front body. The only way to get it flat is to work with your breath. Keep coming back to that amazing, beautiful, flowing breath. Okay, now let's lunge it forward once more. Get that front heel under the front knee. We're going to lift and we're taking a, a twist. Sorry, hands to chest. Wrapping right elbow over the left leg. And then your forearms are at a diagonal angle so that your pelvic floor muscles stay engaged and your torso muscles stay engaged. Don't lean into your right thigh. The weight here is in, sorry, don't lean into your right shoulder. The weight here is into your left thigh. And then to complete the twist, you're looking back over the left elbow. Doing that is going to make you wobble around more, so don't worry about that. And now when we untwist, we're taking arms up to warrior one. So you keep the left arm up, drop the right arm down your side, and tip over towards the right. Maybe you can get the fingertips to the ground. Maybe not. You might have to lean a little bit forwards here to get the fingers down. That's fine. Then just keep moving the left upper arm and armpit back. And from here, bringing hands to the floor. And we're going to take it back. Left leg, down dog split. Either keeping the knee straight or bending that left knee. Once more, check in with your shoulders. So this is a half a handstand, right? So you, you'd never handstand um, leaning into one shoulder. There's one super advanced handstand where they balance on one hand, but we, we've got both hands down, so we want the shoulders to be just as square as a normal handstand. Okay, good. Now we're going to bring that foot down. Come forwards into your plank. Flat down onto the mat. Get a little bit deeper into shoulder opening. Okay, so hands on the forehead. 
And then you're going to slide your left knee up the floor towards your left elbow. Actually, no, let's do it the other way around so you can see. Let's take that left leg back and let's slide the right knee up first. The right knee comes up towards your right elbow. Reach the left arm out to the side, palm face down in line with your left shoulder. Right hand slides back in line with the right side of your chest. And then we're going to roll onto the left hip. And as you do that, you can step your right foot back behind you. So you can be on the right of your toes, or you can take your foot flat to the floor. We we'll just pause for a moment before we take the bind. So either staying like that, and guys, depending on your body structure, sometimes the head lifts off the ground here, sometimes it doesn't. It's different from everybody. Now, if you're keeping that left hand on the ground, make sure it's palm down and spread the fingers. Or if you're reaching back for the bind, and interlace behind you and then stretch your arms back okay so I, i'm also in the bind with you so i'm not checking your alignment i'm trusting you all to be very careful with your alignment here try and stretch your whole torso straight think of this as a back bend right in a back bend shoulders go back chest goes forward so you can even arch into the spine a little bit if that's comfortable for your lower back. All right. Well done. And carefully coming up. And then we'll take it to the other side. Sliding the left knee up. Right arm reaches out to the side. Palm face down. Left hand around in line with your chest off the floor and roll onto the right hip. As you do that, you're going to step your left foot back behind your right leg. Yeah, you can be on your tippy toes, or if you take your foot flat to the ground, that will go a little bit deeper into the hips. Let me just pause here a moment again. And we keep trying to lift the left knee up. It's not just shoulder opening, it's hip opening as well. Lengthen out your whole body. And then if you're going for the bind, you take that left arm back, interlace your hands behind you, and then you want to take your shoulders back away from your chest if you're taking the bind. Once more, your head might be off the floor, and it might be all the way down. And that is just to do with um, body structure. Some people have longer necks, shorter necks, broader shoulders, narrower shoulders. Okay, good. Now you're going to roll all the way onto your tummy. And we're just going to take a moment and rest and allow everything to settle. So again, you can have arms down on your sides or hands on the forehead, nose pointing down, or head turned to the side. Allow those shoulders to open and release. All right, now we're going to be doing the same thing. And you're welcome to repeat exactly what you just did. Or you're going to step a little bit for, further, um, uh, deeper into the shoulder opener. Go once more, sliding your right knee up the floor towards your right elbow. And then reaching your left arm out to the side. You're going into it exactly the same way. So then it's right palm on the floor alongside your chest. Elbow points straight up. You push into that right hand. Roll onto the left hip and step your right foot back behind you. So we're going to make sure that the left fingers are spread and pushing down hard into the floor. Right? Don't let that left arm sleep. Keep it nice and active. And then we reach back with the right hand for ankle or shins. You might have to lift that right foot up. And then we try and get the right toes back down to the floor. And make that right knee lift. Don't sink the right knee down. 
it starts to get quite intense in that shoulder of the arm that's reaching behind you on the floor. Coming out very slowly, very carefully. And then we're going to take it off to the other side. So the left knee slides up the floor towards your left elbow. Right arm reaches out behind you. Palm flat on the ground. Fingers spread wide. Left hand run in line with your chest. You push down into that left palm. Rolling onto the right hip. Left foot steps back behind your right thigh. Again, you absolutely don't need to go any further than this. You don't want to. If you do, you're going to reach back with your left hand. Find the left ankle toes. And then maybe you can try and get your left toes down to the floor behind you. Keep the left shoulder going all the way back away from your chest. Left knee is pointing up. Don't let the left knee drop if you can. Great, everyone rolling out. And once more, once you're on your tummy, we're just going to pause there a moment and let everything relax and everything get really heavy. And now we're going to just roll over straight over onto your back for a bridge pose. And making your way onto your back. And once you're there, we're going to bend the knees. Heels under your knees. Arms down your sides. Wiggle shoulder blades in a little bit closer towards each other. And when you're ready, rolling the hips up. So basic pose is just that arms on the floor, chest curling up, or you can interlace your fingers behind your back and try and get your upper arms in closer together, and then maybe your upper spine will start to lift off the floor. And then there's also a version where you lift your heels and you bend your elbows and you rest your pelvis on your hands, and then the heels can drop down to the ground. Gives you just a little bit more lift in the hips than one can get by pushing the hips up just using muscle strength. Make sure you're not crunching in your throat. Okay, let's roll it all the way out. And once you get your bum down onto the floor, take your feet a little bit wider apart and let's roll the thighs. Side to side. Okay, guys, then we're going to point those knees up again. Step your heels in underneath your knees. And now if you want to, you can take it into your full wheel pose or we're going to repeat the bridge that you just did. So if you're going for it, you'll roll the hips up again, hands can interlace behind you, resting hands, uh, hips on the hands. Or if you want to, you're going to take your hands over your shoulders, palms on the ground, roll it up onto your head. And then maybe come all the way up into your full wheel. Okay, if you're going for your full wheel, make sure you keep breathing. And then coming all the way down again. And one small feet out to the sides of the mat. And windscreen wipe of the knees side to side. So when you do these supine back bends, um, 
it really stretches out the hip flexors, so the groins, the fronts of the groins, and it can become a little bit tight. So rolling knees side to side, you all know that releases the back, but it also releases the hip flexors. So you're getting that double release here of your back bend in all the places that you need it. Okay, now next time you lift your knees up to centre, we're going to slide the feet in to touch each other. And then let's take left thigh over the right thigh. We come to eagle legs. And we're going to take a twist over. So left thigh is over the top. Then the knees go off to the right. And then we flatten back down. And you can take your left arm and turn Bring your left elbow up in line with your shoulder, your hand more in line with your head, and turn your left palm up to the roof. That will help to flatten the left shoulder blade down into the ground. So here for half a minute, get that good release after those two back bends. Notice the heaviness of your out breaths. And allow your whole torso to fully sink into the mat each time you breathe out. Even though you're twisting here and there's that compression in the belly and the ribs, try to allow your belly and your rib muscles to soften. And let's roll up to center. Cross your legs over the other way. So it's right thigh on top. Then the knees go off to the left. If you drop your, if you have right thigh on top and your knees drop off to the right, then you don't get the back release. You don't get that particularly lower back stretch here. So it's right thigh on top. Knees drop over to the left. And then you can turn that right palm up to the roof. Elbow on the ground, in line with the right shoulder. Tuning into your breast again. Feeling that full release each exhale brings you. And coming back up to center, we're going to untwist those legs, hug your knees into your chest, knees to armpits, give yourself a good hug and squeeze. Rock around if you want to. Do what you need to to now really stretch out that lower back. And now from here, we're going to make our way up to sitting. Okay, take your legs straight out in front of you. And right knee bends up. Now step the right foot over the left thigh. Take your twist towards that right leg. Flex your left ankle, and then if you want to go deeper, inhale to lift your left arm. As you exhale, take your elbow to the outside of the thigh or the knee. Now focus on the breath. Just like in your lunging back bends, we're lifting out of the lower back each time you breathe in. And untwisting yourself. 
right leg straight. Feet together to start, so feet are in line with the hips. Then take that left foot over, lift up high, and swivel around to the opposite side. And on the inhale, the right arm can lift. On your exhale, swivel around a little bit deeper. Keep flexing that right ankle, pulling the toes straight up. And then untwisting yourself again. Now you bring both feet together. And we're going to come into a figure of four shape here. So you're going to bend the right knee up. Bring your ankle up onto your left thigh. Now we're not trying to bring this foot all the way up to the hip. Otherwise, this doesn't work. We want to have the ankle just below or just above the knee on the thigh. You lean back onto your hands and then bend the left knee. So, depending on your hips, your foot might be quite a way out in front of you. If you want to go deeper, you try and slide your foot in close to that left thumb and maybe scoot your butt forwards and try and get the back of the left thigh to touch your calf. Now, the closer you get towards that right calf, the more your shoulders will want to hunch forwards and the spine will round. So, keep pressing the chest forwards. And now if you're feeling like taking this really deep, we're going to try and twist it, right? Then you're going to balance on your left hand, shift your weight onto your left arm, right arm goes up and try and take your right arm to the instep of your right foot. And then you try and twist your chest. So you push your arm against your foot and push your foot against your arm and try and twist your chest to the left. Then you don't have to do this maybe You've got that right hand on the floor behind you because that's already intense enough for you. And breathe. Good, guys. We untwist first, so right hand to the floor behind you, and we slide the left leg straight and take the right leg to the floor. The other side. So the left knee bends up, take left ankle onto the right thigh, get your figure of four. And then hands back behind you and the right knee bends. All right, so this is going to feel different on each side. Maybe you can get in close on one side and not the other. Don't try and force it any deeper on the side that tends to be tighter. If this is that one. Maybe getting in a little bit closer. And then if you're taking the twist, shift your weight onto the right thumb. Then take the left arm to the outside or the instep of that left foot. Left arm to end step of left foot. And then maybe trying to twist your chest a little bit deeper to the right. And then we take the left arm back behind you. Slide the right leg straight first. Bring your left leg down next to your right leg. Straight into your full seated forward pose, forward bend pose. Now, just like when you were lying on your back with your twist, settle into your exhales. Allow the heaviness of the exhales to relax your whole body, softening into those places that are feeling really tight right now. And then coming all the way up. And you're going to make your way straight down onto your back for Shavasana. And we're going to take a four-minute Shavasana. Guys. Allow your forehead to soften. Relax the eyebrows and the eyelids. Sinking your eyeballs into the backs of your head. Relax the cheeks, the 
the lips and the mouth. Soften into the base of your throat and relax the sides and back of your neck. With each exhale, feel the shoulders relax and release. With each exhale, sinking deeper into your upper back, middle back, and lower back. And noticing if there's any place where you're still holding on right now. Allow yourself to fully let go. To fully release into your rest. Now taking your breath down into your hands and your fingers, your feet and your toes. Let's make small movements there to wake yourself up. Rolling your wrists and your ankles. Rolling your head from side to side. When you're ready, taking a full deep breath, reach out, give yourself a stretch or hug your knees again. Carefully making your way up to sitting. <coughs> May our minds be open to the divine light that guides us. May our hearts be open to the divine love that surrounds us. May the angels keep us and bless us and bring us joy. Thanks, everyone. Namaste.